below. Don't know if you've heard, but there's a new pitch competition in town. Thanks to our friends over at Thai Oregon. And this is one of those, this is one of those pitch competitions that, that you know, kind of got me to thinking about the history of Portland. You know, when I began in startups in Portland, way, way back when, in the last century, the vast majority of startup activity took place out in, you know, Hillsborough and, and Beaverton, which if you're not from the Portland area, those are really the suburbs out in Portland. And, uh, you know, that, that was for a very good reason. Office space was cheap out there. You know, you often needed at that time a giant room of servers and then a giant room of engineers to help run said servers in, in order to build a software company. And so the cheap office space made sense. It also made sense that Intel and Tektronix were out there. And as they would spin interesting people off, or as people would leave with interesting ideas, they already lived out that way. So the startups began there. Then there started to become this infrastructure called the cloud. And with the cloud infrastructure, that means you no longer needed a room full of servers, and you no longer needed a room full of engineers to support those servers. So you really were able to reduce your footprint as a company. And because of that, people began to move into the metropolitan center. So they had been out in Washington County. Now they were moving more into Multnomah County to do their startups, which is where it's kind of happened over the past decade or so, as well as Clark County across the river, Vancouver, Washington, lots of activity there as well. Now that brings us to this newest pitch competition because Ty Oregon has said we've already done Washington County. We've already done Multnomah County and Clark County. So what's left in the Tri-County area? That's right, Clackamas County. They're now planning a pitch event in Clackamas County, which back in the day, I would have never thought of having a startup pitch competition in Clackamas County, which means look at how far Portland has come and how far the region has come to have this amount of startup activity to necessitate three separate pitch events in close proximity to one another simply to give all of the startups a stage to share what they're building. So there hasn't been a date set yet, but the applications are now open. So if you're in Clackamas County, I don't know, maybe you're in Lake Oswego or Milwaukee or Oregon City building something interesting, Maybe you're almost out to Mount Hood and you're building something interesting. Regardless of where in Clackamas County you are, if you're building a startup and you would like to share that with the broader community and vie for investment, then I highly suggest you take a look at the Clackamas County pitch event put on by Ty Oregon. I will link it up. Please get those applications in and the pitch competition will happen sometime this year. We're just not quite clear on the date yet. So thanks again, Ty Oregon, for organizing all of that stuff and, and giving people these opportunities. I look forward to seeing what kind of startups Clackamas County has there. See, this is kind of fun, right? So why, why not just subscribe? And we can do this every week. Just you and me. We can hang out. We can chat startups. Just subscribe. Uh, not done with Thai, because uh, Thai Oregon, which is our regional Thai organization, the global Thai organization is currently accepting applications for Thai women. So if you are a woman-founded startup looking to take your company to the world stage, I highly suggest you put in an application for Thai women. We've had companies from the Portland area in the global competition for the past few years. So we happen to be a really strong region for Thai women because we have amazing women founders. So if you are one of those amazing women founders, please consider applying to Thai women. I would love to see you participating, not only regionally in the competition, but would love to see you sharing your startup on the global stage at Thai Women Global. You know, next week is Demolicious. Might wanna to go to the Demolicious and see what's gonna happen there. Almost didn't happen. Demolicious almost didn't happen, but then they got enough folks, so they're gonna have it. Hosted, as always, by Upstart Collective. 
And uh, word around the campfire, there's some special things being planned for Demolicious in the future. I, I can't really reveal any of them right now. It's kind of top secret, but I know there's some interesting stuff going on. So uh, yeah, if you're competing in Demolicious next week, I wish you the best of luck. And if you'd like to see some people sharing stories and pitching the concepts that they're working on, I highly encourage you to attend Demolicious. That will be taking place on a Thursday next week. It's usually on a Wednesday, but it's going to be next Thursday. So if you haven't been able to make it on Wednesdays, maybe you can make it on Thursday and uh, and see what see what people are building here in town. So, you know, I was talking about startups like for the past decade or whatever, and you know, they've been SaaS startups, those cloud-based software as a service startups, because really that's where a lot of venture capital has been focused. But all of a the sudden, there's been a dip in that venture capital. Things have kind of slowed down and people are like, well, slowed down how much? Well, I just saw a report from Crunchbase that 2024's numbers are half of what they were in 2023. So granted, we're only halfway through the year, but they're half of what they should be halfway through the year. I think they were upwards of 17 billion something uh, last year in 2023. And right now they're at 4 billion something. So not great numbers. If you're building a SaaS company and you're trying to raise capital, you probably are like, yeah, dude, I know. But It'll be interesting to watch this dynamic, see if we can catch up. You know, there have been some great funding announcements here in Portland recently, but that seems to be not the current trend. So SaaS funding is down. Also, part of that may be categorized as AI funding now. So stuff that would have previously been categorized as SaaS, we may be talking about as AI funding. I don't know. But suffice it to say, it's not looking good if you're building a SaaS company and trying to raise capital. So if it's hard out there and you're feeling it, just please know that you're not alone. You're kind enough to come here and listen to me, and I appreciate it. I always enjoy hanging out with you. But I thought you might like a couple other podcast recommendations about Portland and awesome people talking about Portland. So here too. The first one is Kevin Cavanaugh on CityCast Portland. You might not recognize Kevin's name, but you definitely recognize his buildings. He has the fair-haired dumbbell, which is the brightly painted uh, building on the Burnside Bridgehead on the east side. And he also has the tree farm, which is the building on the east side that's blue and, and kind of cloudy, but has a bunch of trees planted on the outside of it. He did the zipper, which you may be familiar with on the east side. So uh, he's done a lot of really compelling buildings here in town, but he's also dealing with some financial difficulties right now. And he's being pretty open about that. But despite all of that, he's still really bullish on Portland and believes that it is a perfect time to be investing in Portland. And I thought you might like to hear a little bit of that positivity. So if you can, please tune in to CityCast Portland, which features Kevin Cavanaugh. I will link that up so that you can see that or listen to that. <laughs> and then the other one, of course, is a you know constant favorite, Stephen Green. Is on the Darwaft podcast. It's called Dare. And uh, just talking about Stephen and all the amazing things he does in the community and areas and opportunities that he sees for Portland from his work at Business for a Better Portland to Pitch Black to all of the other variety of things that Stephen helps the community with. Another really positive podcast on Portland. PPP, Positive Portland Podcast, featuring Stephen Green. So I highly suggest you take a listen to that one. And with this, me being positive, Kevin being positive, Stephen being positive, you have a you have a positive Portland weekend to look forward to listening to podcasts. So I hope you enjoy all of those. And as always, I will keep my ears open and my eyes open for other positive Portland podcasts to send your way, just to keep you in good spirits and keep you optimistic about what we're going to accomplish here in Portland in the coming weeks, months, and years. 
finally, it's a little off topic, but it is innovation. You know, I talk about startups all the time and uh, <laughs> ad nauseum, always talking about the startups. And, you know, startups are innovative and we talk about innovation. But if I think about something that has been consistently innovative throughout my lifetime, no one thing captures that quite like skating. You know, as I was growing up, like it was the 70s and skating was becoming a thing. As a teenager, I couldn't turn on the TV without getting a commercial about a VHS of Tony Hawk or Hasoy Mullen and the Gons doing skate tricks on a VHS tape that I just had to own. So I was really happy to hear that Portland will be hosting the Rockstar Energy Open, which will be a skating competition here in Portland in August. I think it's gonna feature music as well, but it's going to be a skating competition that takes place on the waterfront and uh, you know, promises to bring some attention, not only to Portland, but also promises to bring an innovative group of athletes and, and in some respects, artists to our community to help us celebrate the innovation that they pursue each and every day, coming up with new tricks, doing new things on their boards, and, uh, you know, likely winding up with some broken boards that maybe our friends at Maple XO can do something interesting with as well. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, really looking forward to seeing how that comes together and, and really celebrating that event that thankfully has chosen Portland to host. All right. So that's what I got for you this week. Are you doing okay? Doing well? Good. Just as a quick reminder, Sunday is Father's Day. So if you have a father in your life, maybe give them a little extra love on Sunday. Hang in there. Hope you're doing well. And until we get the chance to chat again, please keep up the good work. That was pretty exciting news, right? But that's not all. There's all this news that's happened already as well. So keep watching and learn more about the Portland startup community.